Hi everyone, thanks for watching my presentations. I want to talk about hemoptysis and today I will limit myself to causes and to those who are not fully in the medical field but who are just interested in getting info as per medical topics is called blood stain spotting and I'll be going over the possible differential diagnosis. In other words, when somebody is covering of blood, what are the possible causes? With that, let's go. The first thing in the tropical world will be tuberculosis. But in advanced countries where smoking is predominant, the first thing to think about is lung carcinoma. Lung carcinoma could then be in various forms. Also, we could be thinking about lung abscess and mycetoma, that is fungi or bacteria infection of the lungs in immune compromised patients or immune compromised individuals could be another cause. Pneumonia could cause hemoptysis, particularly necrotizing pneumonia. Aspergilloma, that is aspergillus mold in the lung cavity, could be responsible. This might sound funny, but it is not because it has caused pain in many, that is Ebola virus, particularly the late presentation could be with hemoptysis. Bronchitis could be overlooked but it's possible acute or chronic bronchitis could cause hemoptysis. Bronchiectasis could be responsible for hemoptysis and cystic fibrosis. I have you now taken the time to make a full presentation on cystic fibrosis, even pneumonia. You can check my channel for cystic fibrosis at a glance and you will enjoy the presentation. So, my heart goes out to every affected people, but they have a lot of trouble with respiratory tract system, the pancreas, and even reproductive system. Bronchogenic carcinoma, like I've given an example, that it's possible that the multisis is caused by lung cancer, so it could be bronchogenic carcinoma, or bronchial carcinoma tumor. It might not be primary cancer in the lungs, it might be as a result of metastasis to the lungs. So secondary to the lungs could be the cause, could be as a result of bronchovascular fistula and there's malformation there. Still on possible differential diagnosis of hemoptysis, foreign body aspiration could be the cause and some particularly in the younger age group when they swallow stuff and they start coughing after. The Lafoy disease, that is developmental anomaly of subepithelial bronchial artery aneurysm, could be the cause. Bacillus anthracis used during the war to attack people and as a weapon of mass destruction, or leptospirosis that could be acquired from the rind of infected animals in water or soil. Plague. This time around is going to be pneumonia plague, inhale Yersinia pestis, or tularemia, that is rabbit fever caused by Francisella tularensis, that can cause pneumonia. It could be secondary to parasitic infection, particularly strongylodiasis, and dengue fever, that is fever transmitted by Aedes mosquitoes causing dengue hemorrhagic fever. And that is very common in Africa and tropical regions of the world. Hemoptysis could also be caused by Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. It's a viral disease transmitted by tick with hemorrhage into the skin and could be caused by gupasteal disease or granulomatosis. 
you have disease that says blood vessel inflammation throughout the entire body could be the culprit. And of course, autoimmune condition like systemic lupus erythematosus is not ruled out. Endometriosis could be responsible, and somebody is yelling, Wow, how could that be? That's what we call catamenia hemoptysis. When we're going to have extra pelvic endometrial tissue deposition in intrabronchial or parenchyma regions of the lungs. So, the woman will have thought that endometriosis is restricted to a reproductive region, but Lo and behold, it could be found when the endometrial tissue is deposited of the in the lungs or in trabuchial or parenchyma regions. Somebody has been expecting this, right? Congestive cardiac failure could cause hemoptysis and mitral stenosis. Mitral valve stenosis could cause hemoptysis. Yes, a lot of people thought I would start with this, that is pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism from deep ventrobosis or venous thromboembolism or fat embolism will cause hemoptysis. Also not left out is pulmonary pseudoaneurysm and bleeding disorders. Bleeding disorders like disseminated intravascular coagulopathy perhaps secondary to sepsis, or idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, or hemolytic uremic syndrome, or von Willebrand disease. They could all lead to hemoptysis. Antiplatelets. Someone is treating, you now, coronary artery disease and is on ticagrelor, clopidogrel, or aspirin if it's at high dosage. And we need to rule that out while the individual is covering today and is having blood stain sputum called hemoptysis. Anticoagulants, zareto, warfarin, heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and so on must be ruled out as well. Trauma. This could be as a result of blunt or penetrating trauma. And broker biopsy. You do the procedure, and after the procedure, the individual is coughing and there's blood. Mortises. Needless to say, because it's obvious, cocaine. If you go over my presentation on street drugs, particularly cocaine, as this is particularly a uh, reference to here. Please check my channel for cocaine. When you go over it, then I don't need to waste my time or your own time going over that here. Cocaine is not good for you. Still on possible differential diagnosis of hemoptysis, we have bivacizuma. It's a chemotherapy. And one of the major side effects of this chemotherapy is bleeding. So, somebody that is diagnosed already to have cancer and is placed on this medication, and now coughing and having hemoptysis, if you could rule out other possible causes, then your problem might be this medication alone. In renal failure, Somebody is asking me, how could hemoptysis be related to renal failure? Okay, listen attentively. It is either due to azotemic hypervolemia or antiglomerular basement membrane antibody induced bleeding, which is Gilpasteo syndrome. These will all occur in high urea level in the blood. And you know it. You do that when there's renal failure, there'll be high level of urea. So the presence of the urea coating everything in the system could lead to hemoptysis. Nitrogen dioxide toxicity. Hydralazine is a good medication for 
control of high blood pressure and you know acute cases when it's very high, particularly in pregnancy and so on. Vaping, yes, I've made a separate presentation on vaping. You can check my channel for that, so I'm not going to waste your time going over that right here. Pulmonary hemosiderosis, the position there along the pulmonary you know, system, and amyloidosis, an autoimmune condition, fibrosing mediastinitis. Mediastinal region is inflamed and causing fibrosis. Secondary to aspiration, the vortices you are dealing with might be secondary to aspiration from the content of the upper airway, okay, or gastrointestinal tract bypassing the epiglottis and sieving into the trachea. So that could be the issue you are battling with, though what you are you know, experiencing physically with the patient is a mortises, but might be secondary to upper airway trouble or gastrointestinal tract problem. Liver failure, yeah. I'm going to end it with liver failure. And the liver is responsible, as we might have all known, for the synthesis of all clotting factors except two. And those would be one bilirubin factor and factor eight. So when liver is in trouble, there will be coagulopathy because clotting will be an issue. And with that liver failure, there's possibility of bleeding everywhere, including hemoptysis. And with that, I come to the end of this short presentation as per about more than 50 differential diagnoses of hemoptysis. So it's impossible for you to be you know, on that world run and not be able to give your consultants 50 differential diagnoses of hemoptysis. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these presentations immediately they are published. Thanks, I appreciate it.